Welcome to the Riding in the Weeds podcast, where we tackle life's inevitable challenges from navigating mountain bike trails to overcoming business hurdles and forging deeper connections with pets and people. It's easy to find yourself tangled in the weeds, but we're here to help with insights and strategies that'll get you out of the weeds. Our goal is to boost your performance in both sports and everyday life by sharing essential skills that we've learned along the way. Through tales of our entrepreneurship journey, thrilling biking adventures, and fostering meaningful relationships, your hosts, Natasha Lockie and Ginny Brandon, will guide you on a journey that's not only enjoyable, but also inspiring. Join us to gain confidence that you need to navigate the trails of life. Welcome to episode 42 of Riding in the Weeds. This week, it's a follow-up episode from last week. You can't try everything. So last week we were talking about throwing up your hands, throwing in the towel, and just saying, I've tried everything and it hasn't worked. And this week what we're going to talk about is, okay, so now you've changed that mentality, you've changed that thought pattern, and you've started to investigate what other options are there out there And now you're like, what do I do? Because there are a hundred different ways I could achieve X, Y, Z. So we're going to dig in just a little bit. We don't really necessarily have the answer to this. But what we want to do is give you some ways that you can muddle through and think about this in a clearer way so that you don't get stuck right back in the weeds where you were when you were throwing in the towel. So... Jenny, how are we today? Oh, we're doing all right. It's a great day to be a duck here. A little wet. (laughs) I was just telling Jenny that it's been so long since I've been in the rain that a day of rain wouldn't be a bad thing. It's so funny because the thing that you don't have is often that thing that you're like, oh, well, rain, it'd be nice. And you're like, well, some flies landing on my nose wouldn't be a bad thing. (laughs) Okay. They get old. Flies and rain get old really, really quickly. Let's kick this topic off. I've not tried everything. You're totally right. But now I'm overwhelmed by the expert telling me what I should do because it works for them. And we kind of got to this topic or I was inspired by talking about this because I was watching somebody's story yesterday and they were telling me that having a banana in my smoothie is a bad idea because it spikes my blood sugar. So instead what I should do is I should put lemons in my smoothie. And that was about as much information as I got. So then the question is, is do I suddenly just change everything I do? Because somebody else told me that I should actually put bananas and cherries in my smoothie because that's going to help my metabolism. But maybe this other person is correct and I'm incorrect. So what do I do now? Yeah. I think the challenge is that our world right now, we have technology. I'll use that term as an umbrella for all the things social media, all the things tech. And the combination of that combined with the brands that are out there that are all pushing something. And that can even be an individual person as a brand. They all act like they know best for us. And the reality is they don't. I don't know what's best for you. I don't know what's best for any of our listeners. I know what works for me, but I don't know what's best for anybody. And our technology is built in a way that keeps us hooked and keeps us coming back for more. And when we fall into that trap, we can't hear our own wisdom. We can't hear what might really work for us. And so it's super easy to get overwhelmed. Our systems aren't designed for this much input. We're just not, that's not normal. We're not designed to know thousands of people, which is probably what your friends list has on it right now between all your social media accounts. We're not designed to connect with this many people. And when we get sucked into that, we can't hear our own wisdom. We can't hear what might work for us. And frankly, we can't often tell if things are working for us because we're too busy looking at all the other options all the time. Yeah, we have to make that willing choice, that choice to do or not do, to not get sucked into that loop. 
Yeah, absolutely. I want to dig in a little bit to what you just said there with all of the options and the recording and knowing what is working for you. So if you were going to go to a naturopath and say, I've got stomach issues and I think something that I'm eating is affecting me, but I don't know what it is. Their advice is going to be to cut your diet back to the absolute basics. You're going to take pretty much every single thing out and then you're going to one at a time put things back in and so we're going to add cheese back in does it affect us yes or no take it back out we're going to put some gluten back in where we need to do it one at a time and we need to record it and we need to see what the result is I can tell you this liquid collagen product I'm working is changing my life and you should try it and yeah okay so you're going to add that into your diet and then for the next two weeks to three months you're going to go through and you're going to see if it makes a difference and if at the end of they say you know adding anything in three months is about when you will see a change if it's not doing anything for you then take it back out again, right? Everything we do, it needs to be conscious. We don't want to just do a hundred different things and then, oh, we're feeling better, but we don't know what it is. Well, we don't feel any better. Well, how do we know that it's because of one thing that we added that we're, we're not measuring it? So when we want to change anything, okay, I haven't tried everything. I'm going to try something. Pick one thing. Be aware that the person who told you about it is probably selling the protein powder and the collagen that they're suggesting you use. (laughs) Or they're an affiliate in some way. And that's great because if you trust that person, now you've cut through the noise and you can go straight to a product that someone you trust has said is working for them. And that makes it easier. But we've got to be discerning. Just because it's some random person you follow on the internet doesn't necessarily mean that this morning I shouldn't have banana in my smoothie and I should add two lemons. I don't even know why I'm adding two lemons. She didn't tell me. I think that's the trouble with a lot of the things that we do is we don't even know why we do them. I'm currently in the middle of reading Please Unsubscribe Thanks by Julio Vincent Gambuto. And it is really driving home the point of how much of our lives is on autopilot and how many things we have, quote, subscribed to that we don't even realize we signed up for. And when you live like that, you can't make individual choices for yourself for the better or for worse and know what is or isn't working. And I think that's the problem with a lot of our world. I think that's why we end up saying, I've tried everything because we get so overwhelmed. It feels like we've put in all this effort when we really haven't. But the flip side of that coin is you can't try everything that's available out there. You have to be discerning. But if you are inundated constantly by noise, you'll never be able to discern what's helpful for you and what's not, or what's working and or what isn't. And you're right, you have to work with things one at a time. Every good doctor, every good holistic practitioner of any kind will tell you that. You cannot change everything at once because then you have no idea what did or didn't work. Or if there's a problem, What's causing the problem? If you've added five new supplements in and your stomach gets upset, which one is it? You don't know. So you've got to be able to work slowly through things. But again, if you have too much noise going on from the rest of the world, you won't ever hear it. And I have very few notifications on my phone. I have very few notifications that show up anywhere. I don't follow things some days I don't even log into Facebook myself personally because I don't want the noise the noise gets so tiring it's so confusing right because so often again back to somebody is selling something and you know I'm part of 
network marketing. Trinant is the brand I sell. I think it's amazing. I love my community of people that are in there. But even I look at their posts someday and I'm like, is that real? It might be, but I don't know. And it's so easy for me to look at what they've posted and what they're talking about and go, wow, look at their success and look at how I'm failing. But then there's so much of this talk to the image that you want to have, talk to the success that you're having. You can't talk about your bad days because then no one will subscribe or buy into whatever it is you're trying to sell. I'm a mountain bike instructor. I can't talk about the fact that I crashed my bike and broke my wrist. No one will want to do mountain bike instructing. The funny thing is, is the amount of times I've actually been in the hospital getting stitched up or casted up or fixed is I actually have many conversations with the nurses and the doctors about my programs and they're like oh I'd love to do a lesson with you well I'm kind of out for the next six weeks but (laughs) you know how long it is until I can ride my bike again let's go and do a lesson and it actually does the opposite a lot of the time so when we're constantly inundated by these messages exactly as you say right they get in here and if you want to really see the bad side of a small town sign up to the ranting and raving site it's very quickly you want community (laughs) you won't want to be there anymore there's the story about the guy sitting on the side of the road and the man turns up and he says i want to move to this town and i come from a town that has so many lovely people in it and it's a beautiful community and i'm hoping that this town has this and the guy says yeah You'll find those people here. And the next person comes and he says, oh, I'm really wanting to move to this new place because where I was from, everyone was grumpy and they were rude and I just didn't like them. So I'm wanting to move to a place. And he was like, well, you'll find those people here. And the moral of the story is that whatever energy you bring in is the energy you're going to get back. So if you're constantly getting notified about negative things, well, you're going to live in a negative space of mind. If you're constantly being inundated with positivity well what's your world gonna look like yeah and we have to willingly choose that because on social media it is so easy to get sucked in and very rarely is it set up so that it is positive it is so simple for the algorithm to keep showing you the things that are sensational and our news is built around the sensational stuff And if you don't make that conscious choice, then your world will be consumed by that. And that's part of the challenge is we only have so much energy available in a day, in a week, in a month. We have only have so much time. And if you are ending up filling your time consciously or unconsciously with things that continually suck your attention away, the 50 emails you get daily from all of the different brands that you subscribe to, the notifications that come through constantly from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of the different social media platforms. If you are constantly being pulled away by all of that, you will never be able to make a choice for yourself and figure out if it's the right one. You will be bombarded by everything else, all the other options constantly. So it is a delicate balance to understand that you haven't tried everything and then figure out how to use your own inner wisdom that you do have to be able to make those choices for yourself. And insert commercial here, you can learn to listen to your intuitive voice. Everyone has it, it's out there. I'm working on teaching a workshop on that upcoming soon. So if you're interested, drop a comment and make sure that you stay in the loop in commercial. But that's available to everybody. It's not normal to not have that. But in our world, the world is trying to tell you that you don't and you can't possibly know what's good for you. So you have to make the choice that you're going to figure it out, but you got to cut out the noise first. It's so funny because sometimes I will go through my news mailbox in my inbox and I'll be like, oh, Bluetti had a sale. Oh, look, Victoria's Secret had a sale. Oh, oh wow, I might have wanted something from insert brand here and I didn't even know they had a sale. I missed it. And then I think about the people that don't have SaneBox or whatever other filtering system you might have and that is their inbox every day and it's like the toilet paper during COVID. 
if you send a message out that is strong enough, like every single person that posted why is everybody buying toilet paper on Facebook actually contributed to the toilet paper run. And they thought that they were calling it out, but what they were actually doing is just intensifying it. And I remember going to the the grocery store one day and walking down the aisle and being like, oh, toilet paper. Do I need toilet paper? And then being like, why would I need toilet paper? I know I don't need toilet paper. We happened to, before all of it happened, buy a lot from Costco. But that was such a strong indication of just how easily we are subliminally affected by messages that even though you didn't want something you didn't care about something when you are bombarded with enough reels about the controversial topic of the moment you will eventually pay attention to it because it's very hard not to Last year, I found myself going into this sort of mental space that wasn't good. And I'd be scrolling through my Instagram feed and it was positive help and build your business and just coaches constantly trying to sell me social media strategies and this and that and positive messaging. And it was not making me more positive. It was actually doing the opposite. And then I had a friend who kept on sending me random dog Instagram reels. And one day I noticed that my feed was full of dog and cat Instagram reels. And it had pushed out all of these self-help stuff. And I would go to bed and I would be like, oh, that's awesome. Oh my God, look at that dog. Oh, Ian, check this out. And I was giggling and I was laughing. And I was like, oh, okay. If I'm going to scroll my Instagram before I go to bed, which I don't do anymore, and I shouldn't do, then at least if I'm going to be scrolling something, make it a giggle, make it a laugh, make it so lighthearted that I go to bed with joy in my heart overflowing about the weird burner doodle that's doing the strange thing with its owner, as opposed to feeling less than because I'm not doing whatever it is this person is telling me I should be doing. Yeah, because you can't subscribe to the 18 different coaches that are all telling you they have the magic solution to your business problem and that you're not good enough because you aren't doing it yet and you haven't had success. That's the volume that our world is set to right now. And it just keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And the only way we can do anything differently is to choose willingly to shut out that noise and to not participate in it. And it's hard, it's hard to pull the plug. It is literally just as hard as an addiction to alcohol or any other kind of stimulant because this is the level and the volume that our world is turned up to right now. And it takes everybody choosing to do something different in order to make a change, but that's very possible. The irony does not escape me that we are coming to you from a subscription platform that you are choosing to listen to and we are pleased that you choose to spend your time with us and we hope that you are able to make those conscious choices for yourself so that you're not participating in the noise. But we also understand if the noise is just too much, you just have to shut it off. And that's the only reasonable answer is to shut it off so that you can find the answer for yourself. You don't have to try everything. That's not possible in our world today, but you do need to figure out what solution is going to support you best. And it may take some experimenting to get there. There may be some missteps. There may be some times where you have to double back, but it's out there. The answer is there for you, but until you cut out the noise, you will never be able to make a discerning choice for yourself to get to the answer. When I think this is a good point to say, make a decision and make it the right one. Successful people choose quickly, like they make up their mind quickly and they change their mind slowly. So pick something, run with it, record it, measure it, And then decide whether it's working for you or not. If it's working, choose something else, add that in too. 
let's go back to getting in shape, losing weight. Don't go at it with every single idea that you've been given because you won't know what's working. And some of them might be working against each other. When I teach a mountain bike lesson, I teach three concepts, balance, speed, and line selection. That's what you will learn in a program with me. And at whatever level you are at, we're going to make sure we're balanced. We're going to make sure we know what speed we need to go at. And we're going to make sure that we're looking where we're going to see what's coming up so we can make the next decision. And if you actually run your life exactly like that, where are you coming from? Balance yourself first. How fast or slow do you want to go? You need to lose weight for a wedding next weekend? Well, it's a different strategy to I want to lose 20 pounds and keep it off for the rest of my life, right? If the hill is 100 meters long versus you're about to ride for the next 12 kilometers and you're going to do 2,000 vertical feet in that time, like you, you need to pick a different strategy. So figure out your balance, <laughs> figure out your speed, and then pick a line and stick with it. And we have this one trail and it goes in several different directions. So you can pick one of two lines. If you're constantly like, oh, that actually looks like the more fun way. Oh, no, I want to go that way. The trail is so discombobulated. And I said that to the trail builder one day. I'm like, the trail is so discombobulated. I get so confused and I feel like I don't really ride in anywhere or, or get any of the enjoyment. And he's like, Tash, pick a line, stick to it. And ever since then, the trail is amazing. And it's really cool because Ian and I will drop in at the same time sometimes and we'll race each other to try and get in front of each other. But can you imagine, I pick a line, he picks a line, and we stick to our line. But if we were constantly changing, we'd either run into each other or you'd lose the race. <laughs> You're going to crash, right? So really empowering yourself to make that decision. Pick the line, go for it. And again, I'm going to say it one more time. Start with balance. Then figure out your speed. And then pick your line. And don't get stuck in worrying about what's right or wrong. I'm learning Spanish. As you've probably heard me talk about my Duolingo. Preoccupado is the Spanish word for worry. And when I learned that, I was like, oh, that's a great word. Because that's exactly what happens when we worry about things we get preoccupied can't make a decision get confused and then we're like i've tried everything nothing's working i give up can't and we're do paralyzed this. completely paralyzed and they say that a confused consumer can't make a decision but yet all they're doing is trying to confuse us well, I would say a confused consumer can't make a decision, but they're more likely to make sporadic decisions and not well thought out decisions, impulse decisions because of that. And that is the world we live in. That is the way we are marketed to. That is the way everything is constructed around us. And the noise level just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And our nervous systems can't handle it. Our nervous systems are not designed to handle it. Why do you think there are so many more mental health issues that are coming to light now? Like, yeah, we're able to hear about a lot more. Like I said, subscribe to your neighborhood community board on whatever platform you want, and you'll suddenly know exactly how many break-ins there are going on at any given time. But you know what? More than likely, uh, quite a lot of those were already there and you didn't know about them. So yeah, it's the same with mental health issues. Yes, there have always been mental health issues that have been going on that weren't aware. But I also believe it's the way our world is constructed now that is causing a large part of the mental health crisis that's going on right now around the globe. Because we aren't designed to live the way we're living. And it takes a willful, conscious effort to go against everything that is around you, that is pushing you to just live unconsciously and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And it's hard. It's so hard. I'm not even going to lie. I get stuck in the doom scroll now and then. Tash knows she can always tell because I send her more memes and stuff. Like, 
All my friends know. They're like, you know, and I love it. put the phone down. <laughs> well, I don't have to look at anything because I get a curated bunch of things. This is perfect. I don't need to scroll because Jenny will send me a bunch of random things I can look at. And I'm good. So you just got to find a friend that will curate things for you when you, you know. literally have unsubscribed. Open I, out. <laughs> I unsubscribed to milk chocolate years ago. I live in a very small town in British Columbia uh, when I'm not in Mexico. And I, I unsubscribed to milk chocolate because I was told that I shouldn't have sugar and dairy and all of that stuff. So I started eating dark chocolate. Now, what's interesting is our grocery store really only stocks good chocolate. Unless it's Valentine's or a, a chocolate holiday, you don't see bad stuff on the shelves. So we have a chocolate store in town and she literally only has like one or two milk chocolate options. The rest are dark chocolate. So I, and this happens to me a lot, I could tell you so many different stories exactly like this. I believed in my world that everybody had unsubscribed to milk chocolate and it just wasn't a thing anymore. And then I went to Calgary and I went into the Rocky Mountain chocolate shop and I couldn't find a dark chocolate option. And I was like, what's going on here? I didn't think people did milk chocolate anymore. Like they only do dark chocolate. In my world, milk chocolate didn't exist. I love this point because this drives home the fact that social media and technology curates what you see. And so in your world, yes. milk chocolate was really not something that was a part of your world anymore. I can totally 100% tell you Nestle and Hershey's are still in big business, particularly in the US, <laughs> with lots and lots and lots of milk chocolate. But this is the perfect example of how we get polarized politically. Because what happens is our world gets curated and we start to think that the way we think is the only way the world exists. But that is 100% yes. not true. There is milk chocolate everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And even I have no, no notifications on my phone. I haven't had notifications on my phone for a couple of years. And when I stop to think that other people are getting binged every five seconds with every platform that they are on, I, I miss meetings because my calendar notification doesn't yell at me loudly enough because I have everything. And even the little ones that do come, I just ignore them because until I choose to go and look at it, it doesn't exist. And so when I think about people that are living in the exact polar opposite of that world, but I am 100% the person who has curated a certain way of being. Even when I talk to you about the food choices that you have around you and the things that you eat, I'm like, really? People eat that? Like, you'd have corn grits or whatever it was you were thinking of having for breakfast. Not part of my world. And it is that easy, actually, to only see the red car to really just be polarized and then I want to finish this off with a book that both Jenny and I have just finished reading by Joe Vitale and it's called getting back to zero zero limits zero limits and it's about the ho'oponopono concept and what I want to say is that a key part of it is that you are responsible for everything that comes into your world and you're not at fault you're not at blame for those things but because it happened in your world you are responsible for how you feel about it for the fact that it happened in your stratosphere so the less you allow in the less work you have to do go read the book it's incredible they call it cleaning and so you clean that energy because that energy has come into your world. So if you limit the amount of interactions you have going on, the less cleaning you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> and the less you have to constantly be processing all of these things. So if you think about being responsible for everything that's coming in and your emotions and your reaction to it, you get stuck in the quicksand and in the mud instead of just walking through the short grass. Yeah, I love that analogy because it's very true. And again, our world is pushing you to get stuck in the weeds. 
It is pushing you to stay in the thick of it where you are overwhelmed and you can't think clearly and you can't make decisions for yourself. That's how they want it. I hate using the word they because like it's not an entity, but if you choose not to be conscious about it, that's what it's designed to do. The psychological research that has gone into marketing in the last 15, 10, 15, 20 years is insane. And so the techniques are designed to trap you and you have to choose not to be a part of that. So you haven't tried everything and you can't. You won't be able to, but you do need to figure out what you need to try for yourself. And the only way to do that is to cut out the noise. So have fun unsubscribing from the things that are causing you no joy. We can throw Marie Kondo into this mix. <laughs> if it doesn't bring you joy, ditch it. I think some digital detoxing and some digital declutter is a really helpful thing in our world and choosing to get back to you and choosing to get back to what matters to you. That's how you find what works. And the more I have cut out of my life and stepped away from those things, I haven't watched TV in probably 15 years anyway. People come to me and they're like, oh, did you see this show? I'm like, nope. I live under a rock and I like it under my rock. Thank you. <laughs> I don't need to know about that. The more I do that, the better I feel. The more time I spend yeah. with my animals, the more time I get to do quality things with my horse, the more time I get to spend in my garden and outside, and the more fun that I get to have with the friends that I choose to keep in my circle that bring me energy and bring, lift me up. And it's a way better world. But it takes a conscious choice to step away from it. And, in, and you get judged for it. You will. But if it's worth it to you, the judgment shouldn't matter. The cool thing is, though, is that you can actually step away from the judgment, too. Because most people don't have any idea the way you're doing things unless you make it clear to people. And you stop having conversations with people about, like people just don't have those conversations with you about TV shows because they know you're not the person to have a TV show conversation. It's like talking to someone who's not a football fan about football. Uh, you just don't bother, right? Yeah. And then you get the like-minded and the not like-minded and then you actually start to curate a group of people and conversations that you enjoy having. So I do want to say we really value the fact that you have subscribed to us. <laughs> And knowing that you've made a conscious choice and you're making a conscious effort to listen to our podcast because you believe we're giving you value really does mean a lot to us. And if you think that what we're saying is helpful and you know somebody that would enjoy our message, please share, please write a comment, please give us a review, please let us know what you think because that helps us. It helps us curate our content so that it is valuable and it's worth your time to listen to this podcast every day. And I really want to encourage you to be discerning about any podcast you listen to and any information that you listen to because there's always just the one side that you ever see on anything. So you have the power, you have the sovereignty, you are in charge everything that you allow to bring into your life and just because someone says you should read this book <laughs> doesn't mean and I'm terrible if I start a book I feel like I have to finish it and that's not true either right you can start something and be like this is not for me this is not valuable information and audible is amazing you can actually write to them and be like I don't like this book can I have my credit back because I want to read something different most of the time you get those options so Again, thank you so much for listening to us with our follow-up episode on I've tried everything. Okay, maybe I haven't tried everything, but what do I try next? And go with the energy. If it feels good, if the person that is giving you the information is someone you want to trust, that it feels good to you, do a little more research. If you've never heard of collagen, don't just go and buy some collagen. Go and find out what collagen is, why you would take it, and then go back to someone who you trust. Don't go and buy it from Walmart. Go a little bit deeper. <laughs> 
not sure why that was my example, but you can put whatever thing into that hole and that piece of information is true. That's very true. I love it. All right. Thank you for listening. Have an amazing day, whatever you're doing, wherever you are. And we sending our love to you. Thank you for being with us. I am Natasha Lockie. I am a performance coach for mountain biking and just improving your life in general. You can find me on Instagram at Betty Gohard. You can find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook, Natasha Lockie. Where do we find you, Jenny? Yeah, I'm Jenny Brandon. I'm an animal communicator and energy healer for animals and their people too. And you can find me on the web at soulpetconnections.com and on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube under the same handle. You can find our podcast at Riding in the Weeds on Instagram and also on our Facebook page, which is Riding in the Weeds. So again, thanks for listening. Please like, subscribe, share, send us a review. And go to our new website, writinginteweeds.com, and let me know what you think of it. I'm quite proud of my work. <laughs> you should be. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time.